This is paradox theory. A paradox are, is two seemingly contradictory traits that are in fact complementary. Tough and love would be the best example, right? Let's pretend your mom and dad are the quintessential example of paradox in motion. Mom is loving, warm, empathetic. Dad, tough, follows the rules, enforces all the rules. Neither one is wrong, neither one is right. Let's talk about them independently. Let's pretend that each paradox has three points. So if I were to be tough on one side, loving on the other side, okay, each has a point, right? If dad is really tough, then he's got a point. If mom is really loving, she's got a point. But what if in fact these two traits are complementary? What if they have the ability to be tough on the one hand, loving on the other hand? A point and a point equals three. That's a paradox. If all we have is a singular trait that we're good at, it in fact might be our biggest weakness. Because if all we know how to be is tough, we lose that ability to be loving. Just in my experiences and my research, and if this were true in this case where you were being raised by a dad who's tough, like an engineer type mindset, versus a mom who's really loving, very warm and compassionate, the dad's inability to connect with the child at the emotional state will actually cause an abandonment problem. The mother's inability to hold boundaries with the child will cause a loss of self-respect and even a victim slash mentality. So what happens here is because neither trait is being complemented by the other, there's our paradox. We don't have three points. We only have one point. Now, let me just explain one more thing inside the quadrants that will help you understand. So we're going to take the communication quadrant. You find that on your report. And in the communication quadrant, we have two different ways of doing this. We can be frank or we can be diplomatic. In order to understand where we're going, remember it's a 210 scale. So just assuming we're at the zero here and 10, there are four different quadrants here. The goal is to be inside of this quadrant here. This is called being balanced. Now, if I'm balanced, that means I'm very good at frank, or I prefer to be frank, and I prefer to be diplomatic. Therefore, I will have a tendency to effectively communicate using both being frank and diplomatic. I have three points. Now, I'll have a range of behavior. So let's say I'm a 7-7. Seven, seven. So here's your 7, here's your 7. I'm going to be plotted about right here. So my range of behavior, it will be noted, denoted with a blue halo like this it will be completely inside of the upper right quadrant. That's called balanced and versatile. I have three points. I can do either or. I can be diplomatic or frank. That's our goal. Therefore, my range of behavior will tend to be up here. Now, what happens if I'm high on being frank? So let's say I'm an eight on frank, but I'm a two on diplomatic. So I'm going to be plotted about right here. Therefore, my range of behavior will be up in here. This is called, a, this is a dynamic trait, by the way. It's kind of an active. This is the supportive trait, more of a passive. All right. This is a dynamic because I'm in the dynamic quadrant, but I'm dynamically imbalanced because I only have one point. I'm very good at being frank. Now, that's, a, that's not something we want to give away. See, in a personality test or many other tests, that's a zero-sum game. If I'm in balance, well, I'm an eight and I'm a two, well, um, does that mean I have to give up like three or four of my eights in order to bring my two up? No, what if we just simply train to the diplomatic side? Again, we're training behavior and we want to find out the, the cause of your preferences. So you, you prefer not to be diplomatic. Well, there's probably a good reason. And now we start working towards that. So it's a very, um, a very dynamic um, activity. But in this particular case, because we're imbalanced with the frank 
We're not going to be um, healthy down in here. Now, the next part is what if we're the opposite? What if we're a, an eight on diplomatic and we're only a two on frank and now our range of behavior is going to be down here? This is called supportive imbalance. Notice they're just both imbalanced. I only have one point. The last one is over here. What if I'm plotted right here, let's say a 3-3. Three, three. I'm going to be balanced, but I'm going to be deficient. I can't, or I prefer, or I tend not to do either. So I'm kind of non-communitive. I've had them where they just don't really want to be here, frank, and they really don't want to be here or diplomatic. So they're balanced, but they're deficient. Again, what we're doing is we're working toward being balanced, and there are 12 of these paradoxes. You're gonna have one page it's, uh, in there that's gonna be uh, all 12 graphs, and then there's gonna be an independent page for each single paradoxical behavior or, or set of behaviors. So that's how the, the paradox theory works, and that's how the graphs are read. Now that's just an overview. I'm basically asking you to please read the report, kind of get a feel for the report, look at anything that is, strikes your interest, and then when we debrief through the process, we'll answer any questions in greater depth uh, as according to what you want. All right, thanks again for listening to the video and watching it. I'll talk to you soon.